Hey, welcome back to the channel. All right, it's time to talk about the newest champion in the game, Shathra. Just to be abundantly clear, I really do like her. For me, she's going to be all about the uh, atrophy and where you can use it. Now, I'm going to show you a series of fights here. We're going to go over those and, and where she's extremely powerful. And then, of course, we'll talk about her awakened ability. Does she need it? Is she recoil friendly? There is one particular synergy I think you want to make sure you know about her. Going to help her out uh, quite a bit in a, a few specific fights. And then I will initially place her on the tier list at the end of the video. And we'll talk about that a little bit in my kind of like prognostications for here. So let's get started here. We've got this first fight, CCP, uh, when it's a seven star Shothra, it's always going to be this rank two SIG 20. Uh, this is a 276,000 uh, drafts, right? And I want to be abundantly clear. She, I, for me, it's about that entropy. It's going to be where the opponent has buffs that have a duration, right? She has the attribute off of her SP1. It's passive. I love that. And that is going to be reducing the duration of those buffs by 70, 70 percent. All right. Now, Drax isn't going to be having very many of this, so it's not going to amplify her that much. OK, and you're still going to, I think, be pretty impressed with the time. I know I was. The other thing that she's really about is her her egg versus wasp management. Right. And those are those other passives in the upper right hand corner. We'll talk about them as we go through here, kind of explain how to use her a little bit here. But the big thing is we got we were using attribute. We're getting up those vulnerabilities, which is what's happening when you're using your heavy to power steel. And then we go into our SP2. You saw that was a really big burst of damage. And we're really set up there. This draft could have had probably another 30 to 40,000 health. And I don't think it would have looked that much different. That was 35 seconds. Having done testing for champions on this map, that's pretty fast. That's pretty fast. And I think that's going to allow potential use for her in these non-super buff heavy matchups in battlegrounds. All right. Now, let's go ahead and further talk about her. Now, this is a matchup for her is Hulkling. She's not like a hard counter in that she's not going to counter as unblockable or things like that. Uh, I'm very comfortable fighting Hulkling, so I don't particularly need that very often. So what I'm using here is the atrophy. Now, it comes off of the SP1. You can see in the upper right hand corner, it lasts 20 seconds. Not only is it great because you can see how much it's reducing the duration of any buffs that Hulkling gets after that's up. Also, and this is what I love about it, it gets refreshed with any special. With Shothra and the map where you can play her, and if you're playing her well with her loop, you're throwing specials regularly. And look at the damage that is now coming off. So even though sh her kit doesn't like hard shut down Hulkling, you don't have to play her loop perfectly. Like you're not seeing me parry very much. I'm not able to land my heavy very much to get in my big power steal. And it's totally, totally fine. I really like that about her. That's the part of thing for me, that makes me think, okay, this champion's probably not going to be niche. How use, widely usable are they? I don't know yet, but not niche. This isn't just a pure uh, maestro counter, almost like I planned it. All right, so now we're going up against maestro. And what makes her so particularly good against maestro? Now, he's a defender I will openly talk about in Battlegrounds. I struggle against still, even though I have pretty good counters. You take away my America, you take away my Kushala, I'm struggling. I really, really am. And here's why is her special one inflicts that passive atrophy. We've gone over that, but there's a reason why I'm hammering that point home. I think that is a massive part of why you will want her. Uh, the ability accuracy of that cannot be reduced. So even if he's got his glancing up, you'll see when we throw our special, uh, we are, we'll still refresh it. So we'll, we'll, we'll get to it here. Didn't plan that one quite as well as I did the other, but there we go. So there was glancing. We didn't need to worry about that, right? That whole thing about your special still glancing because of the frame and all that. That's You've heard me talk about that enough. But so with that happening, also additionally, and I think this is going to be a shout out for war players, battleground players, PvP players, is when that's up, the stand your ground mastery is just totally turned off by your opponent. Awesome. Now we'll try to talk a little bit more about how to play as we get into, oh no, we're going to have one more fight here. I think we're going to move into actually Serpent. And I, I do think she's potentially a good Serpent counter. I can't uh, completely replicate battlegrounds on the ctp server but what i can do is this is my this is my own six star rank five ascended serpent and i intentionally i didn't even put in a, a one tiny amount of iso nothing in her so in my opinion i think she's really punching up also her combat power rate is is like basically nothing right if you remember six stars don't uh have combat power rate a default highest like seven stars do so that's making her loop significantly harder to pull off here the other thing that's in her favor is if you want to use her for Serpent, you actually can punish his SP1. I, I got like 50% on it. I kept trying to get a super clean, always nailed it fight for you guys to see. I, and I couldn't do it. After like 45 minutes of trying, I needed to move on. But I think if you want to use her for Serpent, you're going to actually be able to punish his heavy. You're going to be able to get out of the way of that first right there. 
And uh, well, that's just the special too. But you'll still get out of the way of the big hammer. You back up, and if you dex at the right spot, if you evade at the right spot, you can actually land your heavy, which again kills the wasps. Right? Really, really nice. Gets you your power gain. Gets the energy vulnerabilities up. I keep saying energy vulnerability. They're just flat out vulnerability. So even if you're doing physical damage, it's going to increase those too. And then you have the atrophy, which will reduce the duration of his. See, watch how fast his death immunity goes down. Lovely, right? That's one of the biggest baddest parts of Serpent. There's a lot of big bad parts, but that is one of them. Uh, and if you can get your vulnerabilities up better than I did, right? Because I only had five. You can get up to 35. Your damage is going to be higher and you can be able to get through that, that fight much quicker. I think with a, uh, a better combat power rate, which will come through having a better rank or using a seven star, you're going to pull off much better results there. I, I, I right now, I feel confident saying she is a counter to Serpent. It's how good, how powerful, how dominant of a counter that I can't say with certainty. We'll cover that a little bit more when we do the tier list placement, though. All right, now just to basically go over her loop in a, in a really clean format uh, so we can talk about it in a fight that lasts long enough to really get it down, we're going to go up against the CCP Drax. has 900,000 health. And you're going to see we're just going to basically combo to get it started. That Those combos are going to put the eggs on Drax. The eggs also, you get an increased value for eggs uh, when the opponent is stunned. This kind of reminds me of spider, uh, spider Ham a little bit in that regard. Not overly massive, but just kind of you're better off. You can apply more when they are stunned. You then go into your SP1, right? And then so your SP1 is not going to inflict the atrophy that we've talked about. The final hit also inflicts uh, 300 to 350 eggs. And then also all special attacks turn the eggs into wasps. You then use your heavy, like we just saw literally right there, to basically kill your wasps. It's gonna shoot your power up with the power steel. And then additionally, that is placing those vulnerabilities up. You can see we're up to 28. And that's like your basic rotation, right? Uh, you're doing your basic attacks to get the eggs on. Your special one uh, is going to inflict more eggs. The specials themselves turn them into wasps. You heavy to get your power steel to put up the vulnerabilities and you do big damage, and you're cycling through a lot of damage. Another reason why she's a pretty good uh, serpent counter, a lot of have a lot of power gain to throw a lot of specials to be constantly knocking them down. There's also a skill ask, and you've kind of seen me uh, work with it here too, for your special two. It's gonna inflict five vulnerabilities, great. That's really, really nice. However, if it's inflicted after the first hit of a heavy, then there's 10 extra vulnerabilities put on. That's how we got all the way up to 35, which is the max, and why we had such nice damage going and why she can close this out really well. It's part of her skill ask. If you're not able to do it, I do think there's a noticeable decrease in her damage output, but it's still pretty good. I think a lot of this is going to be about learning her heavy uh, spacing, those sorts of things, getting those vulnerabilities up, and then stacking those really big uh, vulnerabilities. They're big once you have 35 of them. Each individual one's pretty small landing those SP2s, and then just cycling through there. All right, let's go ahead and place her in the uh, the tier list. All right, here's her initial placement in the tier list. As you can see, we, I have her ranked as a very, very good champion. This is a quality champion, uh, and I kind of feel like this is her floor. I'd be very surprised to see her move down anytime soon for a variety of reasons. It's basically everything I showed you in there, but the biggest thing that I can't sh shout out to me, like it's just a big deal, is that atrophy. The, reduce, the reduction of the defender's buffs by that significant 70% duration, and then you can just keep it going. It can't be shrugged by a node or a defender or anything like that. I think that's going to make her incredibly meta relevant because she also has the damage to back it up. Like you saw that. Well, I think what's ultimately going to make her, is she going to be a battleground star or not, is how good is that damage? And that's something I just can't replicate on the CCP server. I think that's going to be a very time will tell. The defenders that come out, uh, and how well she can take her non-target matchups and how many target matchups does she have. Like, that's just a formula that we're not going to know for two to three or four months, essentially, right? And we'll continue to keep an eye on that every single month as we update this tier list. Now, her signature ability, uh, it's that heal. And you saw that kind of kick in on the larger uh, Drax fight because it was our second fight, right? And it's nice. Don't get me wrong. I personally can't place too much value on it because it's a heal outside of a fight. Now, that's great, right? And we were all very, very perturbed when the uh, revive farm and the potion farming was nerfed. But at the same time, I think when you're in a fight, particularly in battlegrounds, which is where I think she's built for, I can't tell for certain, but that's my sense right now. There is no next fight. So, yeah. The other thing is, 
you can get, with well, this is at SIG 200, an 80% chance to place a vulnerability when a buff expires. That's great, but you gotta take it all the way to SIG 200. And also you're getting 35 of these vulnerabilities. Each individual one's not a big deal. What I think this will do is make her even more dominant in her dominant matchups. So do you need her awakened? Absolutely not. Is it really nice and help you in the your target matchups? Yes, but I would not be finding myself using an awakening gem on her or my signature stones on her if they're valuable resources. If she's a six star and you just have a ton of them laying around, go for it, have fun. It's gonna help her be even more dominant uh, where you want her to be dominant. Now, I mentioned there being a very specific synergy. It is with, actually with Wasp. I think Wasp and Yellow Jacket, definitely with Wasp. And it's gonna turn her power steel into just a power gain in case you're going up against a champion or a situation or a node where you cannot use the power steel. It's gonna give you a really nice big uh, power gain. So obviously like in war or in questing where you see that and you really wanna use your Shothra for the rest of the lane or something like that, you can bring that along. It also looks like it might be pretty darn good uh, for Wasp. I wouldn't feel right doing this video without at least mentioning her spider totems. That's going to help. It's similar. I think the best way to analogize it is similar to uh, Apocalypse and the whole horseman concept. It does look very powerful for spider versus heroes. It's something that I will explore, but is way too much to add into a video like this. Her loop is uh, pretty well protected. It's not perfect though. And in fact, you saw like in the Hulkling matchup and in the Serpent matchup, they can mess with her loop pretty darn bad. The cool thing is, and this is where this is why I like her. This is why I'm very actually cautiously optimistic on her. Is it feels like in her targeted matchup with a lot of buffs that have durations, which is a lot of the uh, meta defenders right now, because of the atrophy, she still actually pulls off incredible results. I don't think she's going to be a war champion, and and this is kind of like a little like mm, with her is there's no resistances, there's no immunity. She does not counter auto block miss or evade any of the big threats that we're often uh, facing, her big threat handle is again through her atrophy. So any sort of nodes that are adding onto it or placements that are often happen in a war map, she's not gonna be able to handle. At least I just don't think so. I don't think she's gonna be able to shut down a fight in enough time to be able to take a node that's throwing those sorts of challenges at you. She does have the unblockable off the special two, I guess, but still like, uh, I don't know, I don't know. I, I just, you know, she needs to punish. She doesn't have a damaging debuff or anything like that. So she's kind of unique in that scenario. Not that you can't use her in war. I just think the higher up you go in war, the more likely you are to find yourself with another option. She obviously will be good in questing. That heal will help you if there's fights after fights after fights. Uh, so the, the signature ability be a good there. Overall, I very much like her. Now, we will I will show all of these results to the MCC Illuminati. Of course, they will go over it and we will give the full ranking update uh, for September when that chill list comes out in just a few days. And then, of course, as always, we will always update the rankings every single month for meta placements, how they're being used, and as we learn more about these champions and how they're actually going to work out in MCOC. As usual, let me know what you think we got right. Let me know what we think you got wrong. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Yeah.